Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for another Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke episode, number 37, I think we're at. In the last episode, we finished up with, I believe, Saffron City Gym. We got ourselves the Marsh Badge from Sabrina. It wasn't all that difficult, I will say. We did pull through pretty well, and then we just started basically doing a bunch of random encounters, random captures that we haven't yet done in the area. Now that we have Surf, we have the uh, Super Rod, we have many ways to get Pokemon now in the game. So... What I'm deciding to do is try to use Super Rod Encounters as much as possible because we've seen certain legendary Pokemon in the Pokedex. We know where they can appear. But as I was, uh, I just kind of reminded myself in the last episode, we do not know exactly what fishing encounters exist in the game. Because back in Generation 1, it doesn't show you on the Pokedex where a fishing encounter appears. It only shows you things when you're moving around, like surfing or, uh, walking through the grass and in caves and all that stuff. So, all that being said, we're going to do some more fishing encounters today. I'm going to look over my list and see where I haven't yet gotten an encounter. But, of course, let's start things off with a team recap. Level 41, Jiggles the Wigglytuff up first with the Body Slam, Mimic, Sing, and Reflect. Uh, I was going to say combo. Not really a combo, I guess. Move set. Next is Guarly, level 42, Primate, with a nice 110 for the attack stat. Low Kick, Karate Chop, Rock Slide, Seismic Toss. Next is Blaze the Charizard at level 42. Almost breaking 100 with the speed stat, 99. Ember, Slash, Fly, and Cut are the moves. Next is Buster the Haunter, level 42. 115 special stat, best on the team, with Psychic, Confuse Ray, Hypnosis, and Thunder. Next is Gary the Gyarados at level 41. Best attack at 122. Pretty, uh, pretty specially stat, specially statted, I guess, right there as well. Defense isn't bad either. Surf, Dragon Rage, Bite, and Blizzard. Why is your speed stat the slowest? I don't know. Anyway, last but not least, we have Medusa the Onyx at level 42. Best defense on the team at 162 with Dig, Rock Throw, Screech, and Bind. So, we've got our Cerulean City encounter. Where else can we go for an encounter? Let's take a look where we can fly around to. We've already done everything we can here, I'm pretty sure, all along the way here. Cerulean, we did get our encounter in Lavender Town Pokemon Tower. There's no encounter in the city itself. We got our encounter in Vermilion City. We... Didn't get one in Celadon City just yet, so we're going to head over there and see what we can get by fishing in the water. There's a tiny little spot of water. I don't know, can you find something? Is it only by fishing here? I know there's one town that I don't think surfing gets you anything, and I think it's this one. It's either... Well, actually, let's go across here and grab the so, uh, softball TM, which nobody is going to be able to learn, because I'm pretty sure... Well, I know, only Chansey can learn it, as well as Mew. Hello there, I've seen you, but I've never had a chance to talk. Here's a gift for dropping by. TM41 Soft Boiled. Only one Pokemon can use it. That Pokemon is Chansey. This man is a liar. He just does not know about Mew. So I guess in his mind, he's not lying. He just doesn't know the truth. Mew is out there, possibly under that truck. But let's see what our encounter is here in Celadon City. This is it something I don't have yet? I've got my list ready. Pidgey. Pretty sure I don't have Chirp on the team just yet. No. Interesting encounter, I guess. Now, how can we lightly tap you? And the answer is we can't. So I'm just going to sing you to sleep. See if we can not sing you to sleep. See, I could mimic the gust attack, but, like, that's not going to help us. Don't sand attack me, please. You sand attacked me. I said please. Now this thing's going to land. Of course it's not going to land. Come on. Minus two accuracy. Let's go into a... Ghost type with hypnosis. 5% more accurate, I believe. Might be 10% more accurate, but it's either 60 or 65, it's now zero. You gotta love that sand attack. We actually got it! Alright, so Pidgey falls asleep. It is a low level, a low evolution Pidgey, so I'm thinking a Pokeball should easily do the trick. We got 59 of these things. Even if I gotta use every last one, we're going to capture you. Or just the one. So Chirp, the Pidgey, has been added to the Pokedex. Pidgey, the tiny bird Pokemon. Very docile. If attacked, it will often kick up sand to protect itself rather than fight back and lower your accuracy 52 stages before you have a chance to do anything against it. Anyway, Chirp. If I seem like I have a lot of energy, whoops, a lot of energy today, it's because I just got back from some Pokemon going. Currently, what I'm doing in that game, I'm recording some footage, of course, for the next video, which will be up probably later this week, I will say, because we have ourselves some raid battles going on now. I am at the level to engage in raid battles, and the next video is going to feature a bunch of the raid battles, and some pretty interesting raid battles at that. Now, is there anything else we have not yet done? I know we missed out our encounter in Safari Zone because of just simple Safari Zone game mechanics. I think we've got every other encounter along the way... If I am missing anything, like I said before, let me know. Did I get Pokemon from... 
Officer Jenny in Vermilion City. I think I already have. I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to double check to be sure. I know I fished here for a Rhyhorn. I remember that. And I think every other encounter along the way we've already done. Yeah, okay, so how is Squirtle doing? Whatever Squirtle happened to be. I can't remember, it's been so long. Oh, and also, this episode is the start of our Monday through Friday uploads for Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke, because we're almost done with this playthrough, and I want to get on to the next big playthrough we have planned. So that being said, Monday through Friday we'll have episodes, and I think there's nothing more to do but continue our adventure going south of Fuchsia City. I'm going to heal up first of all, make sure we have our Pokemon back to where we have to be. And... Well, we haven't got an encounter south of here just yet, have we? I'll start by fishing. As I said, I'd rather get a fishing encounter if possible. Now, where else is Mew? Because I know... I think there were some sort of legendary things in Seafoam Islands. I'll get a regular walking encounter in there, but along the way, I want to see if I can get myself some fishing encounters. Keep my eye on the cat. She's in here trying to jump on stuff again. As always. So let me just check the town map. Do I have that? I don't have that. But if I check... No, I can't check with flying either. I gotta see. Are there two routes? Who has a town map in this place? Usually people have town maps on the back of their, uh, their doors. You might have one. Looks like a town map to me. Alright, so we're here in Fuchsia. Let's uh, see, I'll go back here. So we got Sea Route 20, Seafoam Island, Sea Route 19. So it looks like everything to the east of Seafoam Islands is considered Route 19. I'll go with that, because 18 is right there. Okay. So now I know. I wasn't sure if the route going south from here becomes Route 18 at some point. Or sorry, Route uh, 20. But since I don't really know for sure, I'm going to consider this to be Route 19. Oh, wait, this is something different in Pokemon Yellow. Wait, I'm under attack. Wait, you'll have a heart attack! No, not that I'm aware of. I did just have another bacon and egg breakfast today, but I don't think that's gonna really... You know, if I overdo that, maybe we're talking heart attack situation, but I really don't think so. Anyway, we're gonna body slam, see if we can take this Dratini one hit. Maybe we do. We could have mimicked something from you. But let's see, we have a gold duck. I'm gonna body slam you! If we get the knockout, we are 12 levels above. Oh, okay. Almost. But don't disable my body slam. Let's take one of your attacks. Let's so. What do you think, Willow? Should I scratch? Scratch attack? I'll take scratch attack. Might as well. She likes the scratch. Alright, and it goes for a scratch of its own. Now, what's cool, I've said this before, but what's really cool with the way the new system works is I can see her back there. You stay away from the War Turtle, even though I say I can see her. I didn't notice when she knocked over uh, Spritz the War Turtle some time ago. Oh, don't lower my accuracy. And a critical scratch. Who would have thought you'd see a Wigglytuff scratch an Alakazam unconscious and gain a level off of that, too? Swimmer is done for. Ooh, that's chilly. It's a cold reception. Watch out for Tentacool. Those whacking vertebrates will sting you, old school! Alright, who is up for the level next? Gonna be Gary. Bringing Gary with us into the water. But let's take on this trainer first. We're here. Have to warm up before my swim. Or else you'll have a heart attack. That's what the guy meant. Willow, I battled these guys out of order. Alright. Two Pokemon. Nothing crazy. Dragonite. Normally I'd be like, oh, oh no, what do I do? I've got Blizzard. I have Blizzard, right? I've got Blizzard. Goodbye. No way you're taking that. Nice thing about Pokemon Go with the update, they have increased the super effectiveness and also decreased the not very effective. Because I remember, I think it already went up, the video where I was taking on the first gym from the update. I was surprised at how my, um, whoa, what is it? Sneasel! Sold the Sneasel. He was taking so much less damage from um, Espeon Psychic moves, despite the 1500 CP difference, but... It's because they've changed the way super effective and not very effective works. Thanks, Ken. I'm ready for a swim. All right. Now, if I had a surfing Pikachu, I could do something here. Dogs and burgers aren't special today. Pika! I think that's supposed to be Pico. Now, there was a an episode of the anime 
where a surfing Pikachu named Pico was in it, and there was a whole thing about it had, like, bluish eyes, and that led people to think, is that where Alolan Raichu got its eye color from? Because Alolan Raichu surfs on its tail. We had a surfing Pikachu called Pico. Both of them have blue eyes. Maybe that Alolan Raichu, the very first one, is Pico. The CU Knights all in surfdom. If I had a printer, I could access this to print off my high scores in the Pikachu surfing minigame, but I don't have that. I don't have any of this. Summer Beach House Pokemon, welcome. 30 years of waves, surfing dude. So, we're gonna head down towards the Seafoam Island. We have a lot of trainers to take on along the way. But first of all, let's get ourselves. Stop. There we go. Let's get ourselves the encounter. Super Rod Away. So, one thing I'm excited about for these playthroughs, or this playthrough, is by doing Monday to Friday, I'm gonna get through it so much quicker, and then we can move on to the next really advanced game I wanna get into. Do I have Nido Queen? No, I have a male Nidoran. So I can capture this. You've got to have more than 40 HP, do you? I don't think so. Hang on. Let's switch into... We'll go to Jiggles. We can mimic Poison Sting, if you have that. You'll double resist Poison Sting. There's no way Jiggles is taking you down with a uh, Poison Sting. You got Double Kick, too. Super effective. Am I scared? No. Nope. Not with a level difference. Alright, let's mimic away. What do we have to work with here? I have... Why do you not have Poison Sting? We're gonna take the Double Kick, though. If you can survive a Double Kick, then we'll put you to sleep with Sing and go for the Capture. We can actually survive a second one of those, too. Maybe. Hang on. No, that'd be iffy. So we're just gonna try a Sing attack and go for the Pokeball. Why is Sing failing so much? Haven't landed a single one this episode. A single sing. But there's one right there. Needle Queen takes a nap and wakes up. So Pokemon Go, how about that? I'm having a lot of fun with the gyms now. Like I said in the part that I recorded today, which will be like the third section of the next Pokemon Go video, but I've gotten to a point where the gyms are fun to play again. A lot more fun than Sing missing and then them waking up on the first turn of sleep. But yeah, the gyms are fun because it used to be like, back before the update happened, it was kind of a bit of a chore to take over a gym and get, you know, all that time and effort invested into it new and get 10 coins out of it. I mean, 10 coins a day is pretty good for me. I'm happy with that. But it was then the, uh, what was I going to say? It was just more of like a, a, a daily chore to have to do, right? Now... It's like, it's fun because as you weaken the opponent's motivation, their CP goes down along the way. So, it used to be like it would take a whole lot of my Pokemon from my team to take down a gym, and there's a lot of healing has to happen afterwards. But nowadays, I can use the same team over and over again, and they can take down the gym because the opponents get weaker along the way. The downside, of course, is my Pokemon... STOP WAKING UP IMMEDIATELY! Pokemon Go is fun. At least the gyms have become more fun. I find, though, the gyms are taking more time away from my capturing an item collection, though. Needle Queen finally gets captured. New Pokedex data added for Needle Queen. Needle Queen, the annoying as friggin' just whatever Pokemon. The drill Pokemon, actually. Tough scales cover the sturdy body of this Pokemon. It appears that the scales grow in cycles. Let's give a nickname. Where is the. A for annoyance? No, we're gonna go with uh, what I named her in Pokemon Go. When I was younger, I'm gonna call her Point, as you can see. When I was younger, I had a bunch of Pokemon nicknames thought up for when I eventually do capture them in my Pokemon Blue playthrough. Of course, as we're all now well aware, I only, cap or only captured certain Pokemon along the way in Pokemon Blue and made them part of my main collection. So, I never really got to use a lot of the nicknames that I have for my Pokemon. But I'm using them in Pokemon Go, and thanks to this randomized Nuzlocke, I can actually use those nicknames in uh, this game as well. That does make me realize, though, I made a mistake in the last episode when I captured the Kabuto in Cel or Cerulean City. I nicknamed him Razor, because I couldn't think of any other nickname to give him. I forgot I'm using this yellow randomized playthrough as a what-if kind of a game, where I get my... if I Basically, if I capture a Pokemon I already have in Pokemon Blue, I would give it the same nickname that I gave it in my main Pokemon Blue or other Pokemon playthroughs. So the problem there being, I never did nickname 
my Kabuto. So I shouldn't have nicknamed him Razor. So if I have a chance at some point, I'll go back and just give him back the regular Kabuto name. And not that it really matters. I don't even think I'm going to have to use him because there's so many other Pokemon to choose from at this point. But if I do another randomizer at some point, and I will, trust me on that one, I will just, if I catch a Kabuto, I'm not going to nickname that one. Let's just go with a bite attack and take down this Poliwag. I wonder if we can make it to the Seafoam Island in this episode. Because what I would like to do is... Oh wait, we can get another encounter at the power plant also. Because what I would like to do is see if we can get some legendary encounters. Of course, Articuno, or Articuno, is at the bottom of Seafoam Islands. I could get that encounter along the way. And since I think I set the randomizer to randomize even legendaries to just any Pokemon, I could just do it along the way because I might not necessarily get a legendary. I might get any other kind of Pokemon. So, let's see what our surfing encounter would have been on this route. I don't think I have a Blastoise. I could have taken a Blastoise. Oh well, I've got Gary. And we're just gonna run. We're gonna preserve the PP for when we take on some trainers along this way. I like to sort of zigzag, see if I can get every trainer that I can possibly battle for extra experience. There's one right there. I love swimming. What about you? Not a fan. I probably mentioned this back in Pokemon Blue, but when I was... Maybe three years old? Really young. I fell in a pool when my family and I were off on a trip to like a neighboring city. And ever since, I've had a bit of a, uh, well not really a bit. I guess a bit of a phobia of water. Not like, I'm, I'm not afraid to go in water, but it's really weird. If I can feel water hit a certain part of my head, like just really at the upper top, or the, the upper back of my head, I get this sudden like, I can't breathe sort of a feeling. And definitely it's not very, you know, a nice feeling to have. And I remember one time somebody had uh, hit me with a water gun and it hit me in that particular spot. You know, although I wasn't, you know, submerged in water or anything like that, as soon as the water hit me there, I immediately like, I couldn't breathe. So, for that reason, I'm not a big fan of trying to go swimming. You can beat Pokemon swimming, really? What about Golduck? That's like an Olympic style swimming Pokemon. But I've never been a big fan of water. What's beyond the, hor uh, the horizon? More horizon. Because unless you subscribe to the Flat Earth Theory, we're living on a globe here, people. I remember seeing this thing. They say the Flat Earth Society has members all around the globe. And someone responded to that by saying, read that sentence again slowly. See if it makes sense, you know? I don't know. I believe in what the satellites have told us. Planetoids and planets are roundish in shape, so eh, I'm not going to get into that whole debate. Believe what you want to believe in the end. Does it really bother and affect people? Probably not. I'm going to bite this Doduo. I need to find more Doduo in Pokemon Go. I've only ever found one back when I went to the uh, University of New Brunswick campus. Why are you coming at me with a Weedle? And how's a Weedle even in the water? I know it's kind of snake-like. It's caterpillar-ish, right? But I know they can, like, snakes can swim through the water and stuff. You... I guess we could just... Oh, we're going to have super effective Dragon Rage. Wait. Wait. Not super effective. Of course, it is non-damaging. Oh, come on. I think I got some Paralyze Seals. Oh, we're going to play Pokemon Stadium mechanics, are we? All right, then. Let's switch out into... You can't Thunder Wave Medusa. And you don't have anything that can hit Medusa. You don't learn Surf by level. You don't learn Aqua Tail. You don't learn... You learn Agility. But we can easily bind you... Actually, you could have wrapped me too now that you're faster. And we can miss the bind attack. And you can land the wrap attack. <sighs> See, I can easily beat you, but I'd rather try to do it fast. We're going to go to our ghost type, who takes no damage from your wrap attack, although it will still prevent her from moving, which will be annoying. Now, I wonder. I've heard that the game is programmed that if they have a psychic attack and it's super effective on your type, they'll go for it. Do they go for agility again here? They might be doing that, because Poison's weak to Psychic. That's how some people can sort of uh, cheat the game in Gen 1 and Red and Blue, by going after Lance's Dragonite with, say, like a, a fighting Pokemon. Apparently, the Dragonite will always go for Reflect and... or is it Barrier, I think? And uh, Agility. It won't ever go for the Hyper Beam, because technically it thinks it's hitting you with a Psychic attack. I see a couple of islands. Out of my way, I want to see them too. I want to see some more trainers. Though. Wait, Paralyze Heal? We've got four of those left, alright. Gary's back in fighting spirit. I was using him today in one of the raid battles. I'm not going to spoil what happened, but it was an interesting battle. Oh, you tried diving for Pokemon? <laughs> it's a no-go. Wait for another couple generations. You can do that in the Hoenn region. 
but we had a quite an interesting raid battle today. I don't want to spoil any of how the raid battles went, but as I said, I'm having fun with those. Definitely a nice, fun addition to the game. I look at it as if the, uh, say, like a super strong Pokemon comes by and drops an egg off in the gym, and when that egg hatches, that what I basically call a totem Pokemon, because kind of that's what it is, right? It forces out all the other Pokemon that were in the gym to go back to the trainers. Now, what I thought was going to be the case, like they said, as soon as the raid begins, all the Pokemon return to their trainers. I thought it was going to be that the gym becomes a neutral gym as sort of like an enemy Pokemon takes it over. That would have been pretty cool, because then it's like you, the humans, are teaming up, regardless of team, right? Valor, Mystic, Instinct, whatever. You're all joining together to fight back, for your territory against this evil enemy Pokemon. And it's not the case, the egg hatches, the Pokemon stay in the gym, or the, the Pokemon stays under ownership of the team, but uh, you still get to... What is it? What am I trying to say? The team still owns the gym, but during the raid, you still get your Pokemon back to be able to use it against that gym leader, not gym leader, the uh, raid boss or totem Pokemon, whatever you want to call it. So. I thought it'd be kind of funny. What if the gym does become neutral, and then everybody that's been in that raid battle when it's done, they struggle, they fight to get back in and take over that gym before the other team can do it. That would have been kind of fun, right? Like, we're all teamed up, big camaraderie as fellow players. Like, we're all in this together. We're going to take down this totem, say, like, Dragonite or something like that. As soon as it's gone, I'm against you guys again. I'm taking over this gym for my team. That would have been a fun little way to continue the rivalry, but I guess what you could do, like, uh, the raid today was a Mystic Gym, Pretty low level, too. No, wait, it became Valor just before I got to the raid. So what could have happened is, after the raid was done, I could have taken it over for Team Instinct, but at that point, my boss was like a minute away. I had to run, get back here, record this for you guys so I have an upload. Oh, which reminds me, you might be noticing that there is no Pokemon News Update video thingy today, because I've been still sort of behind times getting stuff ready on the system here. I'm, I'm going to see if I can record one for tomorrow. Because it's been a while since we've had a news update here on the channel. It would be good just to recap everything going on in the world of Pokemon. Refresh myself, too, because I think we may have uh, some of the Mega Stones available from some previous competitions, and I don't know that myself just yet. So, that's kind of the good thing about the news updates. It helps refresh me, and also keep you guys apprised of what's going on as well. So that swimmer is defeated. Ooh, dangerous. Let's get dangerous. I just need a uh, dark duck in here. I got a cramp, glue glue. So this, where are we at here? We're moving on to the next route, but I'm going to see if there's any more... Well, there's a trainer right there, but Gary did just level... Oh, this is the four trainers. I don't want stats, although your speed is... Or your special is now up over 100. We're going to let Guar start off things here. We've got three trainers to deal with. Is there anyone else that we... Oh, I was going to say if anyone else we missed, but this guy sees me from like a mile away. Come on, swimming's great. Sunburns aren't. I half-heartedly agree with you, or at least rather I agree with half of that. I'm not a fan of sunburns, not a big fan of swimming as I've already said in this episode, but that's why when Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, there was a debate over which version should each person get, and I, myself, I said, I'm going to go for Pokemon Moon. For one reason, main reason, me and the sun don't get along during summertime, because I burn so easily. Queen, we just added you to the team. Hmm, karate chop. Yeah, sunburns aren't the best. I usually can't go one summer without getting at least one sunburn. Maybe, maybe this one. Although, I am going off on a trip next weekend, which reminds me, I gotta get some stuff pre-recorded. It's gonna be a week of recording stuff for you guys, I think. Anyway, I'm going off on a trip, and usually whenever I go on this trip, I get sunburned. We'll see what happens this time. Shocker! Shocker in the water. My boyfriend, my boyfriend, wanted to swim to Seafoam Islands. Okay, did you just level up? Yes, you did. Let's let Blaze lead the way over the waters. Sounds kind of crazy, but I have once seen a Charmander in Pokemon Go standing right in the water off the uh, boardwalk up town, so they can do it. That leads into the debate of how exactly do, you know, Charmander survive going in water? Because, like, well, even, you know, Charizard, we've seen Charizard a many, many a time, I should say a many times, in the water, in the anime. I swam here, but I'm tired. Here's my theory. Now, we know that Charmander's Pokedex data says something along the lines of it will die if its tail flame ever goes out. That makes people think that as soon as the flame is out, the Charmander will be dead, right? But I think what it actually means, and this is just a different way to interpret it, a Charmander can't die unless its tail flame goes out. So, 
The way the Pokedex says it, it will die if its flame goes out. It doesn't say it will die immediately when its tail flame goes out. It just says when the flame is out, it will die. So I believe a Charmander, in theory, let's say, could live permanently, could be immortal, as long as its tail flame doesn't go out. Maybe once it's old enough, the tail flame goes out naturally, and then it leads into it passing away or something like that. But all that being said, I think it's just a matter of the Pokemon simply will live constantly, live forever, until the flame goes out. And not necessarily saying that, you know, water will take out the flame. Like, for example, we saw Charizard at the Charisific Valley, you know, Ash's Charizard, fell in the water. It came out just fine. The tail never got, you know, what was it called, doused out or anything like that. So, I don't know, just random theory thinking there. Just filling up some time as we defeat this beauty. I'm exhausted. You should take a break. Lapras is so big, it must keep you keep you dry on water. Probably, yes, and so does my Gyarados. Anyway, we're going to save it up here. We're going to save the rest of the trainers for the next episode, because we're at about time. I want to say thanks for watching today's episode of Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke, and come back Tuesday through Friday for more episodes of our Yellow Randomizer to see how far can we make it this week, and how much closer can we get to the end before the next big playthrough starts up, which I'm very excited for, and you'll see why once it happens. But if you enjoyed today's episode, drop a like down below, of course, and leave any comments you want to leave on the series thus far, or whatever you want to see in the future. What you're hoping for us to find when we get our legendary encounters of Articuno and Zapdos, and then within Victory Road, Road Moltres. But if you want to see some more Pokemon videos from the Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke, there's a link in the description to the full playlist. And during the outro of the uh, video here, there'll be some links to some other videos I've done, such as Pokemon TCG Online. We had a Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, Wi-Fi battle, an online competition this weekend. The uh, Tiny Tourney, which I didn't get as much recorded for as I wanted to. It was a busy weekend, but at least I got one video out. Sort of just basically testing the new system. Can it record our 3DS footage? And it looks like it could do that just fine. So that was a very successful test. But if you want to see some more videos, of course, you can always subscribe the channel. If you're not currently subscribed, just click on my face during the outro, and you'll subscribe for daily Pokemon content updates, such as this Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke here. But with that, again, we are done. Thanks for watching again, folks. Professor Chaz is signing off, and I'll catch you next time.